Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and another installment of Wear, Want, Watch, Read, Eat, Succeed. Quite the mouthful, I know, but it's basically my version of a periodical favorites video. I don't like to do them all the time because I want to wait until I have that perfect combination of things that really get my juices flowing. So the first category is wear, and of course I'm wearing the outfit right now. I do like to focus on doing a combination rather than like one particular item or a jumble of items that don't go together. So this is a whole head to toe look that is my transitional kind of spring into summer kind of look because right now in Vancouver the temperatures are hovering around 20 degrees. There's still a lot of crisp air conditioning in my office and so I still like to do a layer not quite at the whole like flowy skirts and summer dresses um, kind of period of the season yet. I've been layering my Nouvelle Apparel new strawberries and cream cardigan which is 70% silk so it's really light and really smooth and even on a hot day it's kind of sweltering my, my apartment right now because I have to have all the windows closed. It's still just breezy you know it doesn't feel heavy or woolly at all and then it's got 30% cashmere for that luxurious softness um, and then underneath I have a new favorite t-shirt and this is kind of a big deal because I'm very picky about my t-shirts I don't like to spend a ton of money on them but equally they have to be just the right fabric so these ones from Caslon are amazing they have a kind of drapey neck that a lot of you guys thought was a v-neck but it's actually a round neck I will link them down below. There is every color and pattern you can pretty much think of in this t-shirt, but I wore this one with the cactus print on Instagram just on a Friday um, recently and you guys loved it. So definitely scroll to the end of the prints. There are a lot of beautiful colors available. I love the cactus print because it's just so well chosen. There's a few little pink ones kind of thrown in randomly. I feel like it looks more premium than it is. They're two for under $40, so less than 20 bucks her t-shirt and they are natural fibers and they wash so so well. If you wash it gently and just lay it flat to dry I don't really think you need to iron them or if you do it's really really not a lot of creases um, and there's just so many pretty colors so I love the cactus but I also love the bright colors. Um, this is a really pretty lemon yellow that's really bright but not it's not like a neon it's got a creaminess to it still. They're just flowy they fit well, they're comfortable, I like the pocket detail, they're nice enough that you could layer it even under a blazer. It is an almost perfect dupe of a t-shirt from Rails. I'll link it down below for you guys for kicks, but it is sheer. So if you are okay with that, then it's a really cute t-shirt, but it is pricey. I tried it on, it was cute, but too sheer for my taste. The Rails one has a print that's almost identical to this one. It's got the pink and the green um, and very, very similar design. So that is kind of a big part of the outfit is the top parts of the t-shirt and cardigan. For jewelry, I've been keeping it really dainty, just wearing my new Petite Baroque collection a lot. I actually really am loving the choker right now because it's not a choker that you can feel. The chain is selected by me to be even finer than my original faceted chain. It's very dainty. It's the infinity chain feels like nothing jeans from frame which I have been wearing non-stop I actually noticed when they were in the wash which is unusual for me because of course I have way too many pairs of jeans um, but I missed them while they were dirty because they are so comfortable and you can actually dress them up pretty easily because the body of the jean is not distressed it's only the hem and it's not a lot it's just the right amount it's really flattering around the ankle and so they look really pretty with sandals they look with flats they look really pretty with sandals as well and so they're a good kind of spring and summer jean because they look good in hot weather and feel really comfortable um, they don't feel heavy or anything like that it's a pretty light stretchy fabric that doesn't give as you wear it I decided to get a more affordable pair of sandals and so I wanted something comfortable and nude that was just gonna go with everything and these would be my basic summer sandals and I actually like these so much more than I thought I would um, because of course they are having to compete with more premium pieces but I like them just as much. They're what I like to call faux-y or faux Chloe shoes because they have the scalloped Lauren-like detail here. I really like the color of the nude. It's very 
um, flattering. It's got a little hint of tan to it. It's not too yellowy, um, which I find a lot of nude shoes tend to be, um, especially on the more affordable end of things. They're really comfortable. I love that they have a block heel that's not too high. Come in a ton of different colors. I just went with a really basic ones. For the wand category, I don't have anything super extensive. I finally did get the Dyson, um, and so that is knocked off my list from last time. I've been seeing a lot of advertisements for the new iPad Pro, and I've heard it's really good for people who are into design, as I am with my jewelry and fashion line. Have you any of you guys tried it? Is that true? I've actually never had an iPad, so I'm unsure whether or not to take the plunge. It's kind of pricey for a non-laptop, um, but I'm kind of inclined to try it. So maybe if you, a few of you guys let me know your thoughts, that will help me to take the plunge. For the longer term, I think I've switched my plan from getting a YSL camera bag because I just can't find one that I absolutely love to getting um, something that's been on my bag bucket list forever, which is a beige Chanel flap, but I think I'm going to get it vintage and potentially send it to leather surgeons if it needs some work, especially on the hardware. This isn't going to be anytime soon though because I'm actually still torn over whether to get a medium or a jumbo. I want lambskin, not caviar, but do I get a medium or a jumbo and do I get silver hardware or gold hardware? If it's vintage, it's probably going to be gold, but I kind of like silver, so I don't really know what I'm going to do there. So it's like the initial, you know when there's like that seed planted of handbag longing? I'm at the seed stage, so there's no like seedling yet. It's just the seed that has been planted and maybe it will grow by the end of the year or maybe I'll switch my mind again and that's totally fine. For the watch category, I actually have a show that I feel like got so little attention. I have just started it so maybe it gets awful and that's why it hasn't received that much press. Um, but I actually think it's because it's on Prime and not Netflix, which not everybody has. Um, it's called The Romanoffs and it's by the creators of Mad Men and it has a cast that is pretty evenly comprised of half people from Mad Men half people from House of Cards. So if you like those two shows, I feel like you'll probably like this one. It's about people in New York City who believe themselves to be descended from the Romanov royal family from Russia and it's entertaining, at least at the beginning. And for me, I actually just really enjoy it because of the actors and because of the um, costume and settings, which are just very lush. I think the team is pretty much just entirely borrowed from Mad Men. Diane Lane is in it. If you're a Diane Lane fan like I am, I feel like I like anything that she's in. I watched Under the Tuscan Sun and it just got into my head. Like, I just like love the aesthetic from that movie so much I could watch it endlessly. It's like one of my like sick day movies along with my best friend's wedding. Um, she was also in another really good movie which had a very similar feel. And that was Paris Can Wait, which is about a road trip through France and it's very romantic and beautiful. And if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. My other order making um, show that I've been watching, I watch a lot of shows because I watch them while I create orders. It's been Mother's Day, I've had a lot of orders, so I've watched a fair amount of TV. I completely devoured all of Sabrina and there's just a new installment that came out recently. I actually didn't like, I actually didn't like it at first because it's so different from the original. So if you're a 90s kid, you'll know what the original show was like. It was more of a comedy than anything else, very lighthearted. This one is completely the opposite. It's a very dark reimagining, kind of like um, Riverdale, but Riverdale has just gotten so terrible that even while making orders, so my focus is mostly on the orders, not on the show, I just, I can't watch it anymore. Riverdale and Dynasty, the new version, are the two shows that I want to watch because they're just, easy but I just can't. I feel like the cast overall is just very good. The character development is good. I love how she's um, not super predictable as a character. I remember the summer reading list before I started IB English had a ton of Sylvia Plath on it and then it had Barbara Kingsolver's Poisonwood Bible. Most of the class read the Poisonwood Bible. I, for some reason, chose to read every work ever by Sylvia Plath um, and wrote multiple essays on that, I think. Um, but I heard a lot about this author because of that. So I feel like the entire like 
mean girls like group in high school all read the Poisonwood Bible and then they would talk about it endlessly. Um, so I was kind of interested when I saw this book in the like borrow um, little library that my mom's condo in Hawaii has. This is Unsheltered, it's from 2018. It is an interesting concept. I just started it so I can't give you an opinion as to whether or not overall it's any good. It has a very strong concept in that the plot is about two families living in the same house but in different centuries, the 19th and 21st centuries. And so it's about those families. There are a lot of characters, not a ton of character development so far, but very interesting um, concept and very strong writer for sure. Um, so I, I'm interested. I'm definitely into it. I don't know whether I will like it overall as a book or not. I've been reading that and I have been enjoying reading a paper book. Um, I've read a few of them in a row. I also read um, The Graveyard Book, which was also a paper book. And I realized how much I've been missing that, which makes me feel so guilty because I'm 100% on like the Kindle bandwagon of like not buying all these paper books, but I did really enjoy the experience. Are there any other guilty paper book readers out there? For lighter reading as well, you guys know I'm obsessed with food and it kind of leads me into the second, the next category as well. Um, and I always absolutely loved the Orangette blog, which I'm not sure what the American way of saying that is. I can't, I just can't do French words with like an English accent. It's weird. Um, but that blog is just amazing. My waffle recipe is from there. So many recipes I've mentioned over the years. I'll link it down below. I really hope it stays up because I feel like the author has moved on in life from the blog, which is fine because she spent so many years doing it. Um, and there's just hundreds and hundreds of fantastic recipes on it. But you know, I used to kind of check that every day pretty much for new recipes. And it's pretty clear nothing new is gonna come up on it. Um, I liked the narrative that went with all the recipes. Cookie and Kate is definitely lower on narrative, which is actually sometimes kind of nice if you just want new healthy-ish recipes. You guys know I'm all about healthy-ish, so I still eat gluten. There's no food group that I don't eat. I eat everything, but I try and, you know, keep things a little lower in sugar, fried stuff. Um, more bar, less beer is really the answer to your money questions about my weight. I haven't lost as much as you think I have. I feel like what you want to see is a video that's like the truth about my weight loss where I tell you like this one crazy mind-blowing trick and there's no such thing, I'm sorry. Um, maybe I will do a video about something like that at some point, but there's, there's no secret that I'm keeping from you. I promise. Um, but blogs like that are great because they give you new ideas of things to incorporate into your weekly meal plan that are healthy-ish. So they're not going to be a diet. They're not going to be like free from anything in particular. Although Cookie and Kate, I think is vegetarian. Um, but I feel like that doesn't matter. You can so easily add meat if you want to or fish or whatever. She just has really good recipes. Her blueberry muffins are really good. Um, and her lentil soup is one that I tried the other day and I didn't have a good lentil um, with green lentil soup recipe. I feel like they can turn out kind of not good and baby food-ish if it's not a good recipe and I did really like that one. So that was kind of a winner for me. Now for the actual food category, first of all, I've been obsessed with anything sour. So kimchi, especially actually radish kimchi, but that's in the office. Yes, I keep a bag of kimchi in the office fridge. I know that's weird, but whatever. Um, this brand is really good. Pumwon. I don't know how you say it um, properly in Korean, but the main thing is that they have lots of different types of kimchi available at Asian grocers. I get mine from H Mart and there's no MSG or like weird chemicals. It's really hard to find um, a kimchi like that. So this one has no fish sauce, which I actually wouldn't mind in it, but it's really good. I made kimchi fried rice with this one and it turned out really, really good. Um, but the radish kimchi just to eat on its own is my favorite. It's super, super crunchy and just so good. But the best kombucha by far, hands down, especially if you don't like it to be too sour, is the Whole Foods ones that are on top. So good, but hard to find for me here in Vancouver. Trader Joe's, I went there in Columbus and 
this is I feel like so basic now but I have to mention it because I'm full-on obsessed I've been putting this on everything except for pasta because I'm a pasta purist but everything else it is so good on it is salty but it's sea salt um and the main thing is that the um dried minced garlic that's in it has a roasted flavor i've never had that before i'm actually really not a big fan of dried like garlic powder at all in any food but there's something about the garlic that they put in here that is so good it's not just that this gives this an everything bagel flavor it's just that it actually gives any food you put it on a kind of roasted flavor my succeed tip for this installment is all about risk and i feel like we hear a lot about taking risks in the news anytime you open anything related to motivational speaking or success in business it's all about taking risks still nonetheless want to include that as my tip in this video because i feel like maybe it will mean something coming from me because i am the most risk averse person you could meet. I always have been quite risk averse. I feel like lawyers in general tend to be a little bit more risk averse than your average person. It's all about just hedging your bets and making sure that you make a safe choice and that tends to be you know how advice is kind of couched when you write a memo or something. Um, it doesn't tend to end with a conclusion that you should take a big risk. That said, I challenge anyone who's watching this video including myself, to think hard and think back to a risk you took that you were thoughtful about. Okay, I'm not talking about jumping off a cliff. I'm talking about thoughtful risk taking um, that's going to change the pattern of your life. That's really what it is. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but think about it and try and think back to a risk you took that you regret because I have really thought about it and I can't think of one. Seriously, not one. I feel like as humans, our brains trick us into taking less risk and being super risk averse in situations where risk can benefit us. So I'm not talking about putting yourself in a dangerous situation. I'm talking about taking that jump and applying for a different job, changing careers, trying something different, starting a business, um, starting a new relationship, things like that you know, that are going to change the pattern of your life as you live it every day um, over probably like a longer period, but it always takes that initial choice of taking that risk, making the jump, however, you know, cliched way you want to phrase it. Um, it's actually remarkable how because we've evolved, you know, from a place where there are wild animals trying to kill us, it made so much sense to be super, super risk averse back then where the risk was, you know, getting eaten by a wild lion. Nowadays, that's, you know, a much lower risk and probably not where you're going to actually be focusing your decision of whether or not to make to take a risk in the first place and so our brains trick us into a really risk averse position where we remove ourselves from those situations and I think in general the um, times in your life where you do take the risk and make the jump and go for it if you've been thoughtful about it you are very unlikely to regret it and so I want to encourage anyone who may be like me naturally um, very cognitively risk averse in that the advice um, I give myself tends to have a risk averse sort of tilt to it to rethink that a little bit because every risk that I have ever taken has actually brought me so much joy like my businesses starting this channel there have been pitfalls to all of it for sure but I cannot really ever say that I have truly regretted those choices and so I think they're so worth taking the worst case scenario is that it won't work out but you will probably get something out of it anyway I'm not going to give you a sermon about it I just want to remind you that even really risk averse people can take risks and be happy about it and really grateful that they took those risks and get joy out of those situations and i know that because that's me that is it for this installment of where want watch read eat succeed thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next installment